The Man in the Pitan by Loreto Paras Sulit The boys came to know him very well. Their friendship with this lonely man with a kind voice began one day when the boys could not agree on the answer to a question in their day's lesson in catechism. As they passed the house where he stayed, they had a discussion in loud, angry voices. Lope quick with his fists, quickly rolled the sleeves of his camisa de chino. Hugo and Felix also rolled up their sleeves. Now, boys, can fists settle an argument? Are you trying to decide who is the strongest among you? Or are you trying to find out who is right? The boys stopped short in their coming fight. Everybody knew everybody else in the pitan. So the boys knew that this was the man who had just arrived in town. They saw someone with an attractive, kindly face. His eyes could command when he wanted to. As they stared at him, he went on to say, If you want to decide who is right, open your books, read the answer very well, and decide which of you gave the one exactly like it. One of you may win with his feasts, but that would not prove that his answer is correct. His voice died away as he looked toward the sea. It seemed as if he had fallen into a dream. The boys walked away in silence. At a distance, they stopped and opened their catechism. One day, Lope took a bunch of ripe mangosteens along with him. He pulled the other two with him and he shyly offered the fruit. The man's quick, bright smile completely won their hearts. Soon, they were all conversing with him as though he were their favorite uncle. Boys, he asked them, Would you like to learn another language besides Spanish? I'll teach you another if you can stay with me half an hour every day about this time. What language, sir? asked Felix. Have your choice, French, English, German. The boys looked at him closely. At first, they thought he was joking, but his unsmiling face told them he was serious. Let us study English, suggested Lope. So English it was. After a week, they knew the English names of many objects in their homes and in the town. They could manage short answers to questions, greetings, and simple statements. During the days that followed, Lope, who had been the most interested and active, appeared to be very absent-minded. The man asked Lope what's the matter. Lope said that his mother is almost blind and that his father cannot take her to Manila because they are poor. Let us go to your mother, Lope. Perhaps I can help her. He went inside the house and came out with a black bag. Lope had no chance to refuse. The man was fully prepared to go with him. Lope's mother was sitting on a bamboo chair in the shady portion of the yard. She inclined her face toward the sounds of coming footsteps. Lope ran to her and rubbed his face against her left arm. She smiled gently, but the light did not reach her eyes. There was only sorrow there. Mother! cried Lope excitedly. Someone is here who will help us. Lope was so sure his friend could help his mother. His friend was now looking into his mother's eyes. 
just like any other doctor peering into them. Lope felt better just to see him examining his mother's eyes. When Lope's father arrived, there was a hurried consultation between the two men. Lope heard his friend say to his father, It is not serious, really. It will require only a simple operation if you will let me do it for you. From the look of, on his father's face, Lope knew that he has also immediately trusted this man. His mother was taken into the house. Lope waited outside. At last, his father came out. They smiled when they saw Lope's anxious face. Don't worry too much, Lope, said his friend. Next week, your mother will be able to thread her needle even at night. Sir, said Lopez's father, in all this excitement, my young son has forgotten to tell me the name of the person we shall always be thankful and grateful to. May we know the name of mother's doctor? The man smiled briefly. Well, if you want to remember my name, it is Jose Rizal, he said.